you know, event that happened and that, that uh, explains this very, very powerfully in, in modern times. Uh, the, 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 the Rebbe of Sadagora was an important Hasidic Rebbe in, in, in Europe. And in, the Nazis in the Holocaust wanted to um, read Fodo, uh, um, um, dishonor him in front of his, uh, to remove, to, to, to lower his, his honor. Um, it's why it's strange for me. <laughs> it's really funny. I mean, the last seven years I've been teaching in Hebrew <laughs> these ideas. And I find myself translating from Hebrew to English. You know, third generation Americans translating from Hebrew <laughs> to English, which is kind of funny <laughs> to me right now. But, but uh, the, the um, and so they wanted to take away his, his honor in front of his Hasidim. And so they put a pistol to his head and said, you, every day you have to collect the garbage. You have to uh, clean the sweep the street, uh, sweep the streets. You have, to, you, know, you have to do that. And at night, you have to walk through the street with a Nazi flag. This is what he, they made him do. And every day, he worked all day hard collecting garbage. He got down on his knees and cleaned the streets. And at night, he walked with the Nazi flag. And he survived the Holocaust and every day. And he moved to Tel Aviv. When he lived in Tel Aviv, every year, the week before Yom Ha'atzmaut, he would get up and work with all the garbage men, collecting the garbage, cleaning the streets, he said, and walk in the, with the Israeli flag down the street at night. <laughs> the, he said, what a schut I have, what a great opportunity I have that I can keep the first team, Jewish city clean. I mean, what a horrible thing it was if we didn't have garbage men and people sweep, sweep the streets, if we didn't collect the garbage, have the heaps of, it would be an impossible place to live. What a great schut I have to be able to keep my city clean, to be a garbage man is such a, a great privilege, great honor, great, you know, this is a very spiritual act for me to be able to keep my city clean and to be able to walk with our own in the flag of independence down the street. But if somebody looking at it from the outside, it's exactly what he did. He did the exact same thing. But to do it as Ben Chorin, to do it as a free man and a slave, is what the Midrashim didn't understand. That when you did the same thing that you did in Egypt, when you did it in Eretz Israel, for yourself, not a, it's, you had to do the same thing. You had to build houses, you got to make bricks, you had to grow food, fight wars, and everything. But then Jew Judaism, the spirituality is in the everyday thing. Probably the one most wonderful book about that is Harav Salavechik's book, Yishalacha. Do some of you know that? that Halachic Man. Yishalacha, Halachic Man, uh, by Harav Salavechik, uh, who's probably one of the foremost uh, uh, Jewish thinkers of the 20th century. Uh, and uh, he, he, um, he, he, writes in, in the, in the um, he, he talks about, about uh, three types of people in Yishalacha. There's the um, religious man, there's the uh, cognitive man, the scientific man, uh, and the halachic man. Three different types, you know. And uh, he, he the, the religious man, is, it, he is a man who tries to become closer to God, tries to elevate his soul to reach towards God, to, to, to become more spiritual means to take yourself away from the, from the chains of the material, material world, to be elevated to a spiritual heights uh, where, where you are separated from, from uh, the limitations of the material world. That is what goes through in his book about all the philosophies and psychology of religion. And then he talks about a cognitive man, you know. The cognitive the scientific man says, well, what are you talking about? That stuff doesn't exist. There aren't spiritual realms. There aren't things like that. I'm interested in the here and now. I'm interested in the bugs under this rock. I'm interested in, in the I, I'm, I'm interested in the physical world and understanding how it works and form. That's where I'm interested. In. Uh, that's the cognitive man. The other world doesn't exist for me. It's not relevant. It doesn't exist. It's not there. Um, and then there's halachic man, the Jew. And he said the Jew 
is like the cognitive scientific man. He's the complete opposite of the religious man. The Jewish, the Jew is not a religious man in the sense of the definition of religion. He's the scientific man. He has to, if he wants to know if the giraffe is kosher, he better do some biological investigation. In other words, he has to look at the physical world in order to make collective decisions. He doesn't have to, and his idea is to bring the spiritual into all of those everyday world. In other words, he says, he says, where is the spirituality? Spirituality is in the supermarket, it's in the street, it's in the bus, it's not in the synagogue necessarily. It's everywhere. You, the idea of Judaism is to bring the spirituality into every act of your everyday life. Collecting garbage is the spiritual act. In the right, in, in, and, and so this is, this is the whole essence. And, and, and to be able to see, to, to perceive, and I'm getting back to this more, perception, and, in order to see it in a creative new way, to see it new every time. In other words, to, to, to look at the world and see it in a fresh, with fresh new eyes as if it were just created, is what you he, he goes to a very radical thing. And I, I had the real scoot of having many, many years dialogue with the Lubavitcher Rebbe. And, and so here you have the ultimate, um, um, ultimate chosid of the Lubavitcher Rebbe, and Rav Soloveitchik identifies himself at the beginning of Yish Halakha <laughs> as the pure mitmaget. The, 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 but they come to the same, exact same conclusions, one around this way and the other way around this way. And, and, um, and, but Rav Soloveitchik takes the very, very legalistic view of Torah. I mean, Torah is a law book. That's what he says. It's a law book. If there's anything in it, stories and other things and midrash, anything surrounding it, it's only to understand the law. The mishpatim and the chukim and the mitzvot, it's, only, it's, it's to clarify the law. It's a law book, you see. And, and as compared to Hasidism, Hasidism, which goes around for the other side, and, and, and looks at as a, as a spiritual code, and looks for the... For the, for the um, uh, hidden Kabbalistic meanings between the words. And, and Rav Soloveitchik looks at, at the legalistic part of the way. And, but then he asked the very question. He said, if it's a law book, and if we take Pashat Reshit, the first Pasha of the Torah, you know, what's the law there? You know, he discounts Puravu, uh, you know, to, as, a, as one of the mitzvot, you know, to be fruitful and multiply. He doesn't count that as a mitzvah. That's what every animal does. It's not something for man to do necessarily. I mean, that's part of our animal behavior. What do we? What? So it's not one. Of, but if, if you read, if you if you look at Parshat Peshit, it is. It appears that there's no mitzvot in Parshat Peshit. If you take Parshat Yitro, where you have the Ten Commandments, you got 613 mitzvot. But the the, the the introduction to the Torah doesn't have any mitzvot in it. You know, and and how can that be? You don't write a law book. Write the introduction. Put no laws in it. I mean, what, what's the introduction for? What's it all about? And he said, there is a law in Breshit. It says that we are B'Tselem Elohim, B'Dumut Hashem. That we are, that we are in the image and of God. That we're created in the image of God. And the the, the law of Breshit is we must act in the image of God. We are in the image of God. We must realize being in the image of God. You know, and how do, what does that mean? How, do, how are we in the image of God? Uh, and, and he says, well, Parshat Breshit is about creating the world. That's what it's about. We're in the image of God because we share with him the ability to create. We're partners of God in the continuing creation of the world. And that cr the creative act to be creative and see the world in new ways and create new worlds. This is the mitzvah of Parshat Breshit. Now he goes to even a radical extreme here. He says, if that's the mitzvah of the introduction to the Torah, it's the mitzvah of the Torah. All the other 612 mitzvot are tat mitzvot, the subcategories of how we can become more creative and see the world in a fresh new way. That, and, and if you want to, a wonderful book about creativity. And he says, what's his definition of Kedushah? 
he wrote he wrote a book of holiness,